eyes. If you think you know or have seen any of these crooks, please get in touch anonymously with Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Right, that's all we've got time for this week. Many thanks to Philip, Matt and Joe. Stay safe and we'll see you next week for more Crime Suspects. This is Talk TV. My friends, is Talk Today with me, Jeremy Kyle. And me, Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Well. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a a uh, politically-minded uh, project called WikiLeaks, which said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I, I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? <laughs> What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, is it? There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> There are no banners calling for and the they will release not of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no Hamas. banners, Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march not, when no, it comes to no, Hamas. No, sorry, no, I'm yeah. sorry, I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't. Good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth? is going on in the House of Commons. I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right. Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. If Richard Sunak actually have brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised by a special right. case. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> your <laughs> mind. <laughs> it's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Feltz, every weekday at 4pm, only on Talk, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Very good morning to you. It's just gone three minutes past five o'clock. It's Monday, the 26th of February. I'm James Max, and this is your early breakfast show on Talk, where we're on TV, online, on DAB, and on your smart speaker. We're live from the news building here in London. So coming up between now and six o'clock, you review the papers. Yes, I know. Get you to do some work at this time of the morning. Yes, please. Thank you. 
Also, later this hour, we're going to be speaking to Vicky Price from the Centre for Economics and Business Research. We'll look ahead to the budget, see what might be in it, find out why the drop in energy prices isn't as good as it looks, talk about rising bonuses and the rising costs of a cuppa. And will sanctions on Russia have any effects? So we'll deal with all of those uh, business stories with Vicky Price. Also, you'll find out about the 1970s PUD trend that's back in fashion. But this morning, school suspensions have risen by 92% after a collapse in pupil behaviour. Unconnected, people in their 20s are more likely to be out of work because of ill health. What's wrong with a younger generation? As if I know the answer to that, uh, which is why I'm opening the phone lines to you. Because I think there are a range of issues relating to the younger generation. It could just be, first of all, that we're applying a, a one-size-fits-all, except-it-fits-no-one kind of just general rudeness about a generation. Um, and we might be guilty of that. It might be that we're extrapolating um, statistics that mean we have particular problems, but generally speaking, the younger generations is absolutely fine and they don't need our help, thanks very much. Alternatively, there may be something which is going on that you can prov perhaps provide your experience. And as far as I'm concerned, when I started work, there were a lot of things that you just did and got on with and you respected the authority that was there in the workplace and although there were lots of things that went on you kind of just got on with it you didn't take days and time off unless you were really ill you didn't uh, talk about mental health um, and uh, as an issue even though perhaps it was I mean I certainly remember a time where pressures were huge on uh, me and what I was doing and I think in today's prism, I would look at it and say that there were some mental health dif difficulties relating to some very difficult colleagues that I had to navigate. But I didn't allow that to sort of get in the way of me doing my job. I just got on with it. And I think perhaps there's a slightly different attitude. But there's also a different attitude when it comes to behaviour and behaviours. So that's why I want to open the phone lines. And there are a couple of stories here. So let me give you the stories and then perhaps we can get your experience on this. So people in their early 20s are more likely to be out of work because of ill health than those in their early 40s, according to a report laying bare Britain's mental health crisis. This is according to the Resolution Foundation, for which I have little time. But anyway, they said that young people were more likely to experience a mental health disorder than any other age group, a complete reversal to 20 years ago when they were least likely. Generation Sick Note, says the Daily Mail. Young people are increasingly blaming mental health problems for being jobless, according to a stark report. The 18 to 24-year-olds who are economically inactive due to health issues more than doubled in the past decade, from 93,000 to 190,000. Meanwhile, the Daily Mirror. School suspensions have risen by 92% amid a collapse in pupil behaviour. Some teachers reported having to lock classroom doors to keep out violent pupils. All primary school staff said they face outbursts from children as young as seven. Unions blamed years of Tory cuts to support services. Knew it was going to turn political at some point. OK, so three stories there. And it does point to problems and issues relating to our younger generation. Now, it could be that they just don't... Uh, button up and get on with it. It could be that there's a lack of uh, respect. It could be that there's a lack of understanding as to the issues that they face. Or it could be down to things like social and digital media, which provide a huge number of pressures that perhaps you and I never had. What's wrong with the younger generation, is my question. The telephone number is 0344 499 1000. Now, for those of you who have been listening to Talk Radio uh, on the live and exclusive TalkSport cricket commentary from the fourth day of the fourth test between India and England, you can continue listening, of course, by retuning to our sister station, TalkSport 2. You can find them on DAB Digital Radio, the TalkSport app, online at TalkSport.com or via your smart speaker. Meanwhile, I'd like you to give me a call. I'd like you to tell me... What's wrong with the younger generation? Or maybe you think there isn't anything wrong with the younger generation at all and we older people should stop picking on them. I'm also aware that, of course, uh, Lee Anderson still continues to dominate many of the front pages. If you join me on Saturday, you'll know that uh, we spend an awfully long time talking about that story. Um, but it does make the front pages of the papers. The Telegraph today, Red Wall revolt over Anderson sacking. Private WhatsApp 
maps um, reveal MPs are facing voter backlash over the handling of the racism row. Um, that uh, story uh, continues on many of the papers where they say he could make it back if he simply apologises for the comments that he made. I mean, really, I mean, that is a story that's going to continue to rumble and I'm sure that we will continue to talk about it here on Talk. Whether or not there's more to say on it, I don't know. But I would like to focus on the younger generation this morning because I think it is a problem. I think it is an issue that we need to deal with and I think there are a range of uh, aspects to all of this which is, until or unless we recognise, and I think it does start in schools, until or unless we recognise that discipline in schools is really important. It doesn't mean that you have to have a, a, a rod of iron and to, um, you know, return to the days of all sorts of, I don't know, terrible practices that took place back perhaps in the 50s and 60s in our schools in terms of, um, you know, the punishments that were meted out, whether it's, um, you know, beatings and, you know, I just all sorts of terrible things that went on in schools to maintain discipline. I think, you know, treating children in that way is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, I went to a school that had banned that sort of thing by the time I went there. And it didn't mean that there wasn't discipline. There was. It was, quite, you know, quite rigid. But it was meted out by things like detentions and um, staff who were respected. And maybe it's that lack of respect uh, that doesn't exist. There certainly seems to be a lack of respect when it comes to different age groups. I mean, it used to be show respect to your elders. Um, that, well, that doesn't take place now, does it? No. I mean, if I had respect for my elders, I'd be polite to people like Ken in Kent. Ken, good morning. Good morning. I thought it was 75 or 85 percent of all statistics are made up, James. Um, 76 percent. There you go, 76. You've corrected me, so that's one point to you. Thanks. So why is this? Why <laughs> this is nonsense? I mean, where do they get this nonsense from? You want to talk about something, let's talk about metre charges. Why are metre charges still mm. being made? OK, let's... let's well, we might, we might touch... We might touch on... Uh, Ken, we might touch on that later because Vicky Price is going to give us some uh, news and information on uh, energy what? charges. Well, However... It's bleeding obvious, which is... Yeah, yeah. They keep charging yeah, yeah. it. Uh, stop now. Uh, let's talk about this, though. So, the trend has resulted in the number of people aged 18 to 24 being prescribed antidepressants in the UK, rising from 31% uh, from 440,000 in 2015-16 to 570,000 now. So, um, we've clearly got a problem with mental health, have we not? Now, that's because what they've got to look forward to is another Tory government, because I suspect the fools out there will vote these clowns back in again. No wonder they're all on antidepressants. OK, so you blame... The country you blame... actually topped himself. You Wow. You blame uh, the problems in our youth on the government. Well, let's look at it, James. Can they afford a home? No. Can they get a doctor's appointment? No. Can you get cheap welfare? No. Are we being ripped off on energy? Yes. OK, Have how does... How does OK, OK, yes. fine. I hear your points. How does that then uh, explain, though, this... Uh, according to the front page of, dare I say, The Mirror... School suspensions have risen by 92% amidst a collapse in pupil behaviour. How, how do you explain that? Right, let's talk about school. I was in a children's home at the age of 12, sexually abused. Do you want to talk about that? Do we want to go back to that kind of era? Well, I hope not. Well, that's what you're actually implying. I mean, you know, what are we supposed to do? Uh, discipline starts at home. Let's get that clear, OK? If you haven't got it at home, you're not going to get it at school. So is that the root, of, root cause of the problem, parents. that parents are not disciplining their children properly? Well, I'm not being funny. Just look at... I mean, if I... When I was young, OK, and there was a police officer on the street, good luck with that under the Thatcher government, um, under this Tory government, but anyway, when we used to have police on the street actually doing a proper job rather than sitting back in the office eating obnobs and drinking tea uh, out of their cars, if you got in trouble out on the street, you used to get a knock on your parents' door and you were there, brought there back there by your ear hole, and then that officer used to stand there and say, your child, blah, 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 
and then you used to get disciplined in all kinds of different ways. Let's not even go down that road. But at least there was a community that cared, and that was the community officer. Where's that all gone, James? OK, so I, I, I agree. I think there is a complete lack of respect for the police, but for many reasons. OK, so... Uh, if we started our conversation, you it sounds... Tell you a lot of the reasons about police, why there's no respect. Half of them are complete imbeciles. Half of them don't... The other 25% don't do their job properly. And the other 25% are just looking for early retirement. OK. They recruit <laughs> all the wrong people. Right, you've all had a... you've wrong people you, are recruited. You've and had a... Oh you've had a... You've had a massive old blame storm there. Marvellous. Um, so, uh, when it comes to dealing with the younger generation, uh, you've blamed the police, you've blamed the government, you've blamed uh, the parents. Um, uh, Look at the statistics of the police. How much time they have off? How okay. many sicky right. notes? No, they right. no, you've, you've, you've started the it well. Sicky notes of police. On the basis the that you have. Oh. Sicky notes of police put in. Oh. Right, I'm spinning the wheel of uh, fortune for you uh, because I know how much you like picking a newspaper. Oh, you've picked the eye, Ken. <laughs> uh, would you like uh, a number between... Let's see if I can find the eye. I don't know. No, I don't he's want... not going to poke me in it. A number between 1 and 56, if you wouldn't mind. No, let's have page 3 because normally there's something that's going on that will be there one front page, second page, third page. Hey, you're going to be Where's really pleased ready? about this, Ken. Uh, what are we going to talk about? Palestine? Get... No, guess who's made a return? Guess who's made a return? Um, not Boris um, Johnson. Let me tell you, it's not hope, let me tell you, it's not that. If you are a lover of early 2000s cinema, your prayers may well have been answered. Bridget Jones is returning to the screen. The fourth instalment of the series is expected to be based on the 2013 novel Bridget Jones, Mad All About the Boy. What? It starts All film. Series of what? It starts filming in May, according to the Mail on Sunday. What for the, film? What? For the uninitiated, Bridget Jones is a fictional comic creation of the writer Helen Fielding. About what? About Bridget Jones. Uh, really? Oh, God, I can't The wait. first book, Bridget Jones's Diary, was published in 1996. The film adaptation starred Rennie Zellweger as uh, Bridget. I'll give you some diaries. I'll write you a diary. I'll, I'll give you a life story of Ken. I'll tell you what, it'd be more interesting than Bridget Jones. I can assure you of that. I can fairly be fairly certain that it's not, Ken. Well, I, I think I would actually... It is, mate. I think I, from an age of you, 12 in a children's home to a multi What are you going to call your book? What are you going to call your book? What are you going to call your book? Jibber Jabber? Now, I'd call it the law, <laughs> the process, <laughs> and uh, information. Yawn! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have but you finished I'll yet? i tell you what, James, if you had two minutes with me and actually heard about my life, I think it'd make your hair fall out. OK, I've got enough problems as it is already. Ken, thank you very much indeed for starting our conversation. Right, Ken's blamed everybody. I'm not sure we're further forward. Uh, so we've got school suspensions risen by 92%. Uh, we've got people in their 20s more likely to be out of work because of their ill health. What's wrong with the younger generation? 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Ian, you will be next. I almost can't wait. Uh, we'll be taking more of your calls. And, oh, you can send me a WhatsApp if you like. 0344 499 1000. If you want to send me a text, 8722, start your text with the word talk. And if you want to send me an X slash Twitter slash treat thing, at talk TV, at the James Max. So if you want to join the conversation, please do. We'll take more of your calls next here on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks. It said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I think we should have been consulted. 
this concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> and they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what just <laughs> happened. <laughs> Whoa, <is it? laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> there are no banners calling for the release of the condemn, hostages. They will not there condemn are no banners, that. Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march when you can't say them on that. Sorry, no, I, yeah. sorry, I've got I've got you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's fine. good. I'm, no, so, no, I'm no, sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth is going on in the House of Commons? I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right, Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. If Rishi Sunak actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised you're by a special guy. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> your Collins. mind. <laughs> it's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Twenty-one minutes past five o'clock is the time. Hello, it is me, James Max. I'm with you until six o'clock here on Talk. I'm asking you what's wrong with the younger generation. Now, you might say that's an inflammatory question, but you then look at the suspensions from school, which have risen by 92% after a collapse in pupil behaviour, or you can have a look at the number of people in their 20s who are likely to be out of work because of ill health. And then you can begin to say, well, maybe there is a selection of problems, maybe it's wrong to apply them to all of the generation, but there are certainly more problems within the younger generation, which perhaps starts in relation to parents and parenting, perhaps it continues into schools and schooling and uh, the resources that we apply there, perhaps it continues uh, with the pressures relating to social and digital media and what that does uh, to mental health. And then of course we have attitudes to work. I mean you speak to younger people and you hear what they request in terms of their employer and what they are prepared to put up with. Very different from perhaps the attitudes of 20, 30 years ago. You're almost grateful to have a job. Whereas now, a whole range of things that, uh, that as a responsible employer you would do or put in place. And then of course you have a look at the real life issues relating to can you get on the housing ladder? Do you have um, streets which are safe? Are you able to afford to do the things that you want to do. And then you can begin to understand maybe uh, the concerns that the younger generation have. Oh, I'm being so hospitable. What's wrong with the younger generation is what I'm asking. 0344 499 1000. Now, if you're sitting on your hands thinking, oh, I've got something to say on this, don't call me later because we'll be busy later. So if you want to have your say, call me now and you'll get through and we will try and get through as many of your calls and comments as possible. Meanwhile, Ian is in London. I wonder if Ian's going to blame this Tory government. Hello, Ian. Good morning, James. Ken was absolutely on the money this morning. Well, that makes, a, that makes, a, that makes a change. Talking, talking absolute sense. Brilliant. And yes, it is, unfortunately, James, this Tory government. The last 14 years... Parents have not been able uh, have not been able to bring their kids up properly because they're working all the hours God sends to keep their head above water. Right. And therefore, they haven't been there to bring up their kids properly. And 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 we were known um, many many years ago. If Mum did a few hours as a cleaner or as a cook or a dinner lady or something, we were known as latchkey kids. 
And unfortunately, that has become the norm now. And that's because of austerity and the... But it's the not just austerity. I hear, I hear what you say, Ian. I hear what you say, and I understand that. But it's also because of this pressure, is it not, that we've had a big social change. And the big social change has been that um, men and women should have equal place in the, in, uh, in the work place, that uh, we have a society that is pushing for both parents to work, that, yes, of course, economically, um, we have to have greater incomes in our households in order to be able to afford what we want to do. And I agree that there are issues. Um, but, for example, uh, when I was growing up, my mum worked, and she still does, age 83, um, and, and she worked because she wanted to. And uh, whether one's a latchkey kid or anything else... Um, it doesn't mean that discipline has to fall out the window because uh, you've got your parents working. I think there are other things at play here. I, don't, I think it's a, oh, no, the, I think it's a lazy the, argument to just blame the government. Oh no, that was just one part of it. You then move on to your nutrition. You knew, for you to fulfil your potential, for you to grow up strong, you need nutrition. Unfortunately, people can't afford nutrition, and I know there'll be people out there now shouting at the radio or fruit and veg doesn't cost a lot of money. You've got to take the time to prepare it. Um, you've got to put it... Put, yeah, but put food and... Look, look at the... Ni sorry, prices, back to the... Ian... Ian, look back to the 1970s and look what we ate. I mean, we ate spaghetti hoops out of a tin. Uh, we ate all the numbers that can be given. We ate plastic bread. Uh, we, we ate cereals, uh, as in breakfast cereals, covered in milk and cream and God knows what else. Uh, we ate ice cream. We were terrible. And yet we didn't have this problem that is there. So I think the nutrition thing is, uh, that's bogus. Right, well, after the nutrition, after eating our spaghetti hoops on toast and our uh, Finder's crispy pancakes, we then used to go out and play football or go into the woods or go climbing trees. Oh, I work. love climbing at school, trees. At school, at school, we used to be out playing football, playing rounders, playing cricket, doing cross-country. Playing the kick the can, school, Ian. The school, kick the things. can. No, I didn't play that. You're older than me. Um, we used to play what? Kirby, though. Did you used to play Kirby? Play what? Scurvy? Kirby. No, K E R B I E. It's where you one one lad one side of the road, one lad to the other side of the road, and you throw the football and you try to get it hit the curb and to come back to you and you catch it. You didn't play that. No. Ah, uh, that was good. We used I, to play that. I we had a life. Play football. We had, we had climbing frames. Yes. We had the woods climbing trees. We used to scrump apples. I know it's stealing, but there you go. But now. James, people have got no hope. Young people are not going to get on the property ladder if they're working in a factory, if they're working in a warehouse. You, you, you're going to be looking to get on the housing ladder if you earn £100,000 do year. Think, I do work. think that the education system and the housing system... Uh, have huge contributory factors to, to, to all of these problems. Ian, I'm only going to move on uh, just because uh, a lot of people want to have their say this morning, which has surprised yeah, Dave, the no producer. Uh, which uh, newspaper would you like? Or shall I just... I'm Could spinning I the wheel. The, no, 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 I don't want that. I love the, um, I love the Daily Star page 7, please. That's disappointing because uh, the, the, the wheel of uh, no fortune picked the Daily Mail. Uh, Daily Star what? Uh, Daily Star page 7, please. Mm. British Bulldog, we play British Bulldog at school. What have I done with the Daily Star? I must have eaten it. Uh, I'll have the mirror then. The mirror. No, hang on. I'll find the Daily Star if I can. Uh, what have I done with it? Oh, hang on. I so didn't like it, I stuffed it in the middle of the sun. Um, yeah. Oh, are you sure you didn't want page nine of the Daily Star? I am. Um, number nine will be good, yeah. Oh, excellent. Good. I wonder why that. Here we go. Old-fashioned dessert trolleys are back in fashion. This is because oh, right. uh, the, the Meals on Wheels, popular in the 1970s, are being used again in posh restaurants, and some of the prices are off the trolley. Uh, the Dovetail in Mayfair said their food cart for their sweets did not come cheap either. They spent £54,000 on a top-of-the-range truck made by a firm that designed spacecraft interiors. Uh, the top chef, Tom Sellers, bought a pair, £27,000 each, and he said it was either two trolleys or two cars. Uh, if you have a look at the restaurants around here, they all do a trolley. I mean, I love a, uh, a 1970s-style uh, pudding uh, dessert trolley. 
Absolutely, and there's a place near Regent's Park, um, and I can't remember the name of it. It's called me. Oslo it's Court. It's Oslo Court, it is. Um, and uh, that's still got the dessert trolley. Oh, the and the it's way the they describe the... Gatter. yeah, Oh, the way yeah. they describe the Schwarzfelder Kirschtorte, Black Forest Gatter, is uh, extraordinary. I wouldn't choose the Schwarzfelder Kirschtorte, though. I think they're, they're chocolate mousse, I seem to remember. I used to... I, I, I my grandparents loved that place. It, it, extraordinary. I haven't been for years. Oh, but they yeah, do a fantastic veal milanese. Oh! Oh, apple crumble. Or, oh. or cherry. Cherry pie. Oh, yeah, lovely. Oh. Right, I'll leave you to it. Thanks, Ian. Cheers, mate. There we go. Oh, he's just called me, mate. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> School suspensions, they've risen. People in their 20s more likely to be out of work because of ill health. What the heck is wrong with our younger generation? 0344 499 1000 is the telephone number. Kevin is in Basingstoke. Kevin, good morning. Good morning. Morning, Kevin. So, what's wrong with the younger generation, or am I just picking them out unfairly? I think you're picking them out unfairly. Oh. I mean, my, I mean, my, you say me. Son. It's it's the newspaper headlines that I've gone on. Yeah, but I just said you because you said you. Yes, that's true. That's all right. <laughs> so, school suspensions, they've risen by 92%. I mean, that's not ideal. And then uh, poor mental health keeps young uh, adults out of work. Uh, I suppose either one blames the young adults and says it's your fault. Alternatively, there's something else going on and maybe we need to be blaming that instead. What's your theory, Kevin? Well, I mean, you think what the, what youngsters had, they had to deal with COVID, didn't they? They was, yes. they was locked up for ages, couldn't go to school. Yes. Um, but also, I do blame um, inequality. I mean standard of living falling um they can't but has in inequality and, i mean back in the 70s inequality was was still there it's just that maybe we didn't know so much about it because we didn't have people plastering their their flash lives all over the internet well no i mean in the uh in the 80s uh, an average ceo earned 13 times the average worker yes now they earn over 195 times the average worker so i mean I mean, there's definitely there's definitely now. been a disparity with the very wealthy and kind of the rest, and there are well, some yeah, people I mean, who earn absolute fortunes, and one has to wonder why and how. I mean, people have always earned absolute fortunes, Kevin. It's just that maybe again it was hidden slightly, and 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 today we we have much more transparency on what people are paid. Well, yeah, I know it's always been there, but it's got a hell of a lot worse. I mean, my son's got a good job. Um, in London, he works in a bank. Yes. Um, but, I mean, he can't afford to buy a house in London, nowhere near. I mean, I, I, I do mean, find I bought, it amazing I, that I people in... house in the, eight, yeah. in the 80s yeah. on my own as a painter and decorator. He went to university, he's got a maths degree. Yeah, and, and I, argue, I agree. I think there's something terribly wrong when somebody can have, as you say, a really good job and they still can't... And I've got, you know, friends of mine and their children in their, you know mid, late uh, 20s, early 30s, they've been working, you know, hard in, in what you and I would describe as really good jobs. They just cannot afford uh, to get on the housing ladder. There's something terribly wrong. But I think part of that is because we've got people sitting in houses um, that they, you know, that they don't necessarily need all the space. They're sitting in them because of stamp duty, uh, which gets in the way of them selling, so they don't release them. They're living longer. Uh, and in better health, so there's so the housing stock has to do more work, uh, and then um, we've got we've got all sorts of issues, Kevin. Well, yeah, I mean the thing is, I mean in central London, um, a huge proportion of houses sold in central London are sold to overseas buyers. So what chance of youngsters? Well, not in not any more. To be fair, I think I think that percentage has gone down. But I think people sometimes I think point to the overseas uh, issue as as. as you know, the reason why people can't get on the housing ladder. I, I would say that a lot of housing developments have taken place because of those overseas investors, because our funding system for development is broken. Uh, the uh, market for how people buy and sell um, has friction in terms of stamp duty. There's tax and then also things like Airbnb and all this other stuff where people can make vast sums from... Um, you know, renting out their properties for, you know, particularly at seaside resorts, all sorts of stuff. Um, those things have disrupted the market and we haven't adapted. Well, no, we just haven't built enough houses. I mean, we have the council houses that we have got. I mean, there's still the right to buy. So people are buying them and they, they end up in the hands of 
um, buy to let mortgage people that own, you know, two, three, four, five different houses. And then they but then we still need to have a rental sector. So, you see, that's part of the problem, is that you, you need to have a rental sector as well. Um, yeah, I know, but that, that very same house, you know, if you, if you was renting it from the council, you were paying, like, £150 a week. You, you rent it privately, and it's sort of like £250 a week. Yeah, but that's just market forces, and, and, and you could argue and say, well, why isn't the council uh, getting as much money and, and making sure that they're making a decent return on whatever property they've got? Well, yeah, but they're selling them off, aren't they? Well, I mean, selling them off instead of having instead of yeah, but they're selling them off because they can't afford to. They're selling them off because they can't afford to maintain them, Kevin. Well, no, because councils have had their um, budget from the government cut by forty percent. Mm, yeah, but is it yes, really? They have. I but but is it really? Yeah, but well, then it must be true then. But is it really the council's job to build houses? Of course, it is. Really, we did it after we did it after the war. Yeah. Because we realised that people were living... Well, no, because the war, half the council, they, half the housing stock had been bombed, so they had to no, take after action. After the war, we, the, the government realised that people were living in really poor um, housing and they were unhealthy because they were on such poor wages. Yes, but... And that's you, 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 could say, you can say that it's the government's responsibility to provide housing, but surely it's, it's an individual's responsibility. Yeah. Well, no, the government in charge in charge of the country. They should they, they should run the country for the people that live in it, not not. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that they have to provide everything for you. <clears throat> I can say everything, but housing and and um, health is the one of the basic things. They say, "Oh, why don't nobody want to join the army?" That's because, oh yeah, we if you want us to join the army, but we can't afford to buy a house or start. Sounds like you want the government to provide everything. It sounds no, like you want, want to better, live like the Russians do. Essential. No. They're not providing anything apart from a huge, big, great wealth gap. Well, I think they're providing all sorts of things, but the question is whether or not... Yeah, badly. Uh, well, yeah, I think we can all agree on that, Kevin. That they're making quite a bad fist of it. Um, but the question is, uh, how many um, services should the government be providing? I mean, I, I still find it bizarre that there are people who are pushing for breakfasts and lunches to be provided at schools, uh, as opposed to parents actually providing uh, food for their children. I find it bonkers. Oh, right. So you do, you do want the poor people being fed, but you do, I bet you. What about um, subsidies for private schools? Do you, would you agree with that? Well, there aren't any. Of course they is. They get tax cuts. They don't get tax cuts. They just don't pay tax. It's a yeah, difference well, from yeah, a subsidy. They, they don't tax. get... There's a difference between uh, a subsidy, which is money going into them, which they don't receive, and uh, making them tax transparent because you, you don't necessarily want to pay any more tax on something that is a, um, a, a provision of a, an altruistic service. Pay tax and then they can feed the poor children. Why? I mean, why so should, yeah, but hang on a second. Why? Why should they pay tax again? So, what do you mean why should they pay the tax again? Everybody else has to pay tax. Why shouldn't they? They've got enough loopholes when they're rich. No, you see, I think I think that's the politics of envy, Kevin. No, it's not. I'm not envious. They just pay their fair share. Well, why should they pay any more share than they pay already? Well, because they don't pay. They don't pay um, the twenty percent tax that they get that they should be paying. Why should they pay? Why should somebody pay because VAT they, on a school fee? So, well, well, okay, then, okay, then should the person who pays twenty percent on the school fee VAT should they get a refund for the fact that they're not using uh, the free service apparently that they pay for via their tax? Yeah, but that's their choice. If they can afford to send their kids to school, let them pay all of what they should be paying and feed the poor kids that can't afford their parents can't. But afford why food. should they pay twice? They're not paying twice. They're well, they are, they because they've, they've just paid... No, they're not. Yeah, but they've just paid their income tax. So once you've paid your income tax, why should you pay another tax on, on something that uh, is should be, education should be tax-free, regardless of whether it's paid for or not? Who said? I think so. That's my view. Well, I don't. I think they should pay that 20%. OK, all right. Well, I think pay... that's the politics of envy, Kevin. No, it's not envious. I'm not envious at all. I've worked with loads of rich people. I'm not envious of them whatsoever. I just don't understand why one would pay secondary tax on something where they uh, private schools or fee-paying schools, they pay tax on the um, incomes that they pay to their staff. They don't make profits. Um, the surplus normally gets put back into the schooling. Um, 
and uh, the government and local government benefits from every child who doesn't go to a, to a, uh, a local school because they don't have to provide that service. Well, that's where we differ. I think you should w look after the many, not just the few. It's not a question of not looking after the many, but I don't see yes, why... If you, have, if you have children, I think you have a responsibility to pay for uh, their upkeep and asking other so people surprised. to pay for them. You're asking, other you people, you're asking other people to pay for your children. If you go to a private school, you're already uh, one, one, two, three, four times above those other people. Those young people that haven't got, gone to private education, they have to work so much harder to get to uh, the same yeah, but you, you, privileged kids. Yeah, but I, I understand that. But then on the other hand, uh, you could say that then the answer to that is improving our state school system. Well, yeah, that would be the answer. But and and until happening. or unless we have a government that decides that it's going to tackle the one thing that would probably improve state school education over all else, which is re to reduce class sizes, we've got a problem. Well, yeah, I mean, those private schools... I would much rather that the government focuses and spends their money, instead of spending it on school meals, says we're going to reduce class sizes. Why don't the schools, the private schools, I keep saying, oh, you know, we're going to close because we, you know, because we're, they're going to cut that um, loophole for them. Why don't they just take two more pupils in? If they take two more pupils in a class... Yeah, but they do. I mean, if you have a look at some of those schools, the amount of people who are there on scholarships or on assisted places, all sorts of things, um, which means that, that they really cannot afford, but that child, uh, I don't know, has the, uh, has the intelligence or the uh, gumption or the, I don't know, hard work or the ethic or, or the ability, um, that they can get access to that education and, and somebody yeah, else will pay the bill for them. I hear that argument all the time, but that number is absolutely tiny. Well, it's not, actually. It's, 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 quite, it's quite significant. It's quite significant. To win their argument. It's quite significant. Anyway, Kevin, we can talk all morning, but we're not going to. Uh, I'm spinning the wheel for you uh, so we can pick a newspaper. You have picked the Daily Express. Oh, God. No, just call me James. Uh, Daily Express, a number between 1 and 52, please. Um, four. 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 Mm. Oh, Starmer's record shows reticence to take action against criminals and those who abuse the system. This is leading on from their front page story, which says damning claims of 250,000 extra migrants a year under Labour. Sir Keir Starmer's open door policy on migrants could lead to 250,000 people arriving in Britain every year, according to a report. Yeah, but that's a daily express. It's nonsense, isn't it? I don't word, believe a word of it. Wow. It's propaganda. Propaganda, that's what it is, Kevin. You had your say. Uh, and uh, if you want to join the conversation, so you can you. 0344 499 1000. Uh, we'll come to more of your calls and your WhatsApp messages on what's wrong with the younger generation. That's coming up next on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Well. Nice. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed, which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks. It said yeah. nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I, I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent, that's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? You know? What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh. It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Ooh, <we're missing. laughs>
There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put the statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> There are no banners calling for and the re release of the condemn, hostages. They will not there are no Hamas. banners, Kevin. You can't say everyone on that march where we can say the Hamas. Sorry, no, I'm yeah. sorry, I've got, I've got you both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can't. Like, good. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Stop creating all of these funny little factions with their funny little names, the New Conservatives, the ERG, the Common Sense Research Group, the Red Wall, Red Trouser, Popcorn. I mean, Popcorn, what, what is that? What on earth? is going on in the House of Commons. I'll try my very best to explain that, Daisy, but it is an extremely complicated situation. This just absolutely stinks. Right. Neil Parrish, he was great for his area. If Richard Soon actually brought him out today and said, this guy's going to be advised by your special counsel. Right. If anybody can pull it off, it'll be him. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh. What? <laughs> your <laughs> mind. <laughs> it's not our mind, it's your mouth, Mr. Unbelievable. Collins. Unbelievable. Yeah. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Five forty-four is the time. I seem to have ignited the touch paper, but there we go. What's wrong with the younger generation is what I'm asking you. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the telephone number. Um, quite a few things coming in on the old socials, um, and thank you for all your WhatsApps. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Um, Tony in Spain says youngsters have nothing to look forward to today. A job's not worth taking, not worth getting out of bed. They have no hope at all. I don't think that applies to all jobs. To be fair, Tony, some jobs. Um, this one says, uh, young generation have never been through war, bring back conscription. Wow. Um, this one says, I agree with Ken this morning. Oh, blimey. Um, Neil says, uh, I believe the younger generation have a real problem with um, some form of national identity. They lack any idea of Britishness, a problem that affects most of our nation. Growing up in a small village, we also had a social hierarchy that kept the younger generation in line. And make sure you didn't step out of line, says Neil. Mm. Um, James, is it wrong that I actually want spaghetti hoops on toast for breakfast now, rather than you've mentioned them? Delicious. <laughs> no. Spaghetti hoops for breakfast. I think, I mean, there's so much sugar in them. It's terrible. James, regarding children with mental health problems, boo-hoo, there's no such thing. They are kids, and kids are moody. They just need to kick up the rear end and told to grow up, says Dino. Wow. OK. Uh, I blame the parents, says David in Devon. My three daughters were raised with discipline and respect. We had rules in the house and they had chores. My grandchildren get away with everything and have no respect and think the world owes them a living. James, don't you mean the older generation? Just look at uh, all of them deadbeat politicians and how they've been acting, says Wayne. Um, James, if the Labour Party tax the private schools, which they're going to do, and just 15% of the pupils are squeezed out and have to go to skate, state schools, we'll need to accommodate an extra 90,000 pupils in the state system. A new building uh, for 1,000 pupils costs 30 million. Uh, e <laughs> what even is uh, 90 times 30 is 2 billion. 700 and, uh, million pounds. That cost uh, without the land to put the schools on and for the teachers as well, says Claire. There is a very good point that if you price people out of private education, you're going to have to provide it by the state, and that's going to be difficult. 0344 499 1000. That's the telephone number. What's wrong with the younger generation? Uh, Jeanette is in Portsmouth. Hello, Jeanette. Hello again, James. Hi, Jeanette. So what can you tell me? What's wrong with our younger generation? Well, quite honestly, my experience of the younger generation, I think they're absolutely lovely, a lot of them. Mm. Uh, and, I, and, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I when you see you... these articles that say, um, for example, poor mental health keeps young adults out of work, or um, class war, it says, uh, crisis in schools, uh, shocking rise in pupil suspensions... Um, <laughs> Does it mean that instead of just tarring the whole lot of them with one brush, we should be a bit more specific in our in our commentary? Uh, yes, a, a little bit. Yes, definitely. Because, um, I mean, I was brought up uh, with good manners and everything. My father was a true Cockney, and my mother came from a sleepy village in, in Essex. But I was brought up with uh, to respect people. Do you think there's a lack of respect from the younger generation, then? Well, 
well, yes, quite a lot. You see, you know, I, I do... If you, if the parents have got a good work, work ethic, uh, then, you know, it, it gave my father and myself good work ethic. I think, you know, they the parent, you do uh, get to know... Oh, just sorry. <clears throat> sorry. That's all right. Um... <sighs> what were you trying to tell me? So, uh, if we, we're talking about um, uh, work ethics, and... Mm. and I think if you've got a good, uh, and I also I'm finding that uh, young people are being used by companies as cannon fodder. I'll give you an example mm. of several examples actually. Um, the the ones that can't. Uh, the reason the young women that wanted to always be nurses, mm -hmm. they're just being they're just being taken advantage of in care homes. I mean, I experienced at Christmas uh, visiting a, a care home, and now there were twenty two elderly residents, so they were all over seventy. Yes, and and just two girls were in charge of them. And it All makes you right. makes you wonder how, how they can cope. Now, I'm only going to move on for time reasons, but I think you've made some very good points, Jeanette. Um, I'm just spinning the wheel of whatever it is to pick a newspaper for you, which I can sense your excitement. Oh, you've got the Daily Star. Um, would you like the yeah, Daily Star? <laughs> a number yeah. between 1 and 48, please. 15. 15. Mm, you really are delving into the depths of the Daily Star. Well, wow. otherwise everybody goes near the front, don't they? This is very true. Dog experts have launched an SOS to save our Scotties um, because uh, the terriers facing uh, wiping out. One of Britain's most popular breeds, uh, the Scottish Terrier, has now been put on an at-watch list by the Kennel Club due to their declining numbers. Just 406 were born in the UK last year. <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> there we go. Woof, woof. Uh, Jeanette, thank you very much indeed. Right, we'll go very quickly to Leslie in Glasgow. Leslie, I'm going to have to be brief with you, but what's wrong with our younger generation? Good morning. Oh, uh, right. I thought it was interesting earlier you alluded to a connection between digital media technology yes. and um, illness. Well, my nephew for years was misdiagnosed as having a mental illness. However, it turned out he has electro hypersensitivity disorder, which manifested in brain fog, anxiety, headache, yes. um, insomnia, visual snow syndrome, stuff like that. And this is caused by radiation emitted by mobile phones, computers. Uh, so, for example, the skulls of children are thinner than adults, so more radiation can pass through a child's skull or in the child's so, so, brain. So, sorry, are you, telling me, are you telling me that uh, if you use a mobile phone, you, there's radiation from it? Yeah, it's called EMF... Uh, Electromagnetic field radiation. Oh. The, the, the skull of a the, the, What I found out is the skull. So, we did, so, so, my, so using our it? using our mobile phones is all dangerous, Leslie. True. A so, child's bone marrow up to ten times more radiation. Right. So if you give a child a toddler a smartphone all the time. It can cause a lot of damage. Well, may maybe, maybe, manifest. maybe, uh, yeah. setting aside any any theories as to whether or not uh, using mobile phones uh, creates radiation, but perhaps uh, just using the screen as a uh, catch-all is, is the wrong thing to do. Leslie, only moving on for time reasons. Why? Because we've got to go and speak to Vicky Price. She is, of course, uh, from the Centre for Economics uh, and Business Research uh, and their chief economist there. Uh, so, there we go. Vicky, a uh, very good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. So, uh, we've got some new sanctions on Russia. Um, are they going to have any impact? It's a very interesting question. I think this is number 14, perhaps it's 13 or 14, set of sanctions that have been uh, unleashed. Um, they are, they are uh, you know, quite significant in terms of identifying now people involved uh, with the death of the opposition leader, of course, who died in prison. Um, and uh, just recently and in russia and that is uh you know was inevitable that this was going to happen um but also sanctions which now affect and will be affecting companies that are trying to circumvent the sanctions that exist um already in other words things going through different countries firms being involved in bypassing some of the regulations that have been set up so i think that might start having more of an impact and we know mm. that loads of things are going into russia via turkey for example and loads of other 
countries uh, and they are uh, moved around, if you like, by organizations which uh, somehow or other are able through transporting one thing into another set of uh, of ships, for example, or uh, if you, you know, move things which look like they're going to be sold to, let's say, Kazakhstan or some other country like that, uh, then get transferred to Russia via uh, a different route or from them. So a lot of debate has taken place as to whether, you know, that needs to be addressed. And I think finally, mm. those what those sanctions are widening to accommodate well, the, we, those concerns as well. We will see whether those sanctions do uh, take place, but sometimes I suppose they're, they're there for... Um, uh, I suppose, reason, reasons uh, of uh, political expediency at home. Meanwhile, cocoa, coffee, tea, mm. what's happening? Well, they're going up in price. Oh. Um, there's been a little bit of a warning that those prices are going to rise quite significantly and there might actually be some shortages. Uh, this is, of course, partly, you know, like any other good that you... Uh, get transported from a long distance, um, they've all been affected by what's going on in the Red Sea. So it takes a lot longer for things to come through. But we've also had some problems with drought in various parts of the world, which have affected particularly coca. Uh, and uh, and also all the concerns about climate change and and uh, uh, the, the issues that are already affecting the production and future production of, of such goods. Now, the interesting thing on why even the Financial Times has decided to devote a whole column on this is because, of course, we've all been depending here in the UK so much on those drinks and and any suggestion that there might be some shortages um, is you know uh, of concern to to loads and loads of households. But it's, in reality, it is a true a true situation which we need to bear in mind. Yet loads of other food products are going down in price. It's one of the reasons why if you go into the supermarket now, you'll see that inflation has slowed down quite significantly, and the consumer is benefiting. But those goods that we so much rely on, the route for them to come is so long. Um, and what's going on right now, of course, delays deliveries quite significantly. Right. Um, just very quickly, uh, bank bosses, uh, they could be increasing bonuses. We probably just need a sentence on that. Yes. Well, the, the whole thing is, you know, are we as competitive as we should be? Is the US paying them more? Can we keep the best people? But some of the suggestions, frankly, although you want to do that quickly, uh, are for the mm. doubling of, of what um, uh, the chief executives are getting. For example, the London Stock Exchange itself. Yeah. Uh, what it wants to do apparently is raise uh, what uh, its chief executive gets from 6.25 million effectively to double it. Oh, um, well, well, we so could see we more go. rows over bonuses and things. And when we'd, I'm sure we'd love to deal with uh, issues of Ofcom, uh, Ofgem rather, and indeed looking forward to the budget. We'll have to do that next time. Vicky, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, I should tell you that mobile phones do not have any health uh, issues. And I'll just leave you with words of Peter, who says that the trouble with some youngsters is that they have parents like Ken. So there we go. I'm going to be back tomorrow from five for early breakfast. Meanwhile, next, it's Talk Today with Jeremy Carl and Rosie Wright. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Oh, it's, bless him, he's soaking wet. Well. The most likely situation is that that statue is going to end up in M Shed which is a museum just on the harbour. Nick, I, when we first went to you, I thought you dived into the harbour to get the, get the thing out, for God's sake, man. Well done, good job. Islamism is sweeping our nation. This is not Islamophobia, this is real. Another terror attack, another killing of an MP. Oh, don't worry, let's light a candle, let's all sing, let's look, don't look back in anger and sing Kumbaya. He had a... A politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which said nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China. There was a clear political bias in what he was doing. This is the first time Millam has heard of asylum seekers coming to the town. If we are guinea pigs, then I, I think we should have been consulted. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Well, it will be a problem if they start breaking into people's homes because they can break into yours and decide that you're not doing enough. <laughs> they can break into mine and decide I'm not doing enough. And I'll tell you what, if they break into my home, it will get violent. That's for sure. It's not like, you know, they live in an average semi and where's Harry going to sleep? You might have thought he's come all the way. Couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just, you know, to use the vernacular, chilling out a bit? What are you doing? I'm just about to do 